you positive heads out there. Thanks for tuning your beautiful brainwaves into another episode of the Positive Head Podcast, where we are firmly convinced that creating success and happiness is rooted in understanding the ultimate nature of reality and the fact that as human beings, we are all immensely powerful fractals of the one and only source consciousness, which creates and animates all things. Now, of course, understanding this powerful truth is one thing. Applying this incredibly empowering wisdom to everyday life? Well, that's another. Which is exactly why we provide you with a fresh serving of soul food for thought five days a week to help constantly remind you of what matters most. You are it. And I'm your host, Brandon Beecham. I'm the reflection and extension of you who will be here each Wednesday interviewing a different consciousness change maker. And on the other four weekdays, leading the way to ensure that your perspective is consistently expanded, your vibration is constantly elevated, and your heart is overflowing and full. Also, before we jump into today's episode, I'd like to take about a minute and a half to tell you about a few sponsors that not only help to make it possible to produce this show five days a week, but that I'm also genuinely passionate about promoting. The first longtime stellar supporter of this show that I want to mention is Gaia. If you're not familiar, Gaia is the go-to source for streaming consciousness content online with over 8,000 video titles. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. The second sponsor I'm sincerely passionate about promoting is Purium. It's no mystery that bringing your mind, body, and spirit into balance is necessary if a person truly intends to manifest the greatest and grandest version of themselves. So if you've been looking for a way to easily get organic superfoods into your system every day with a simple plan that can help you reestablish a healthier foundation and relationship with food, like I was doing before I found Purium, I highly recommend going to positivehead.com forward slash transformation and checking out the videos and interviews there where I dive deeply into discussions explaining why I take these products every day. And should you ultimately end up on ishoppurium.com to purchase any of their 50 plus amazing superfood products, be sure to use the code positivehead, all one word, for a 25% discount. All right, all you positive heads, welcome, welcome. Here we grow again. So (laughs) grateful to be back with you all. And I'm very excited to say I am not alone. I'm not flying solo today. (laughs) I have the lovely Samantha Lotus here with me. And uh, Samantha, hello, hello, welcome. Hello. Oh, what a pleasure it is to be here with you and with all of you beautiful positive heads. (laughs) What a pleasure. What a pleasure. So for those of you who don't know Samantha, well, first off, how is that even possible? But uh, I guess it is possible. Maybe there's a chance you didn't hear her uh, on the show before. Um, Let me see here. You were... Not so long ago, we had the pleasure uh, of being together. 858. Episode 858, I had to look it up there, um, was the soul share with uh, lifestyle alchemist Samantha Lotus. So, yeah, uh, Samantha has uh, agreed to help to en- enlighten and and bring some divine feminine into the podcast today. And we're going to talk about some things and stuff mm-hmm. and some whatnots. Um, <laughs> yep. Things and stuffs and whatnots, all my favorite things. <laughs> the favorite, all my favorite things. So something that, you know, I always do when I have uh, someone you know, that's, you know, happens to be hanging out, swinging by the studio and to help, you know, co-host, I, I always like to have that person have the option of, you know, sort of what what's bubbling up for you, you know, mm-hmm. they get to hear what's bubbling up for me all the time. And I, you brought up such a great topic and I got very excited because I I know this is one that's going to strike a chord with a lot of people and um, so why don't you just sort of give the quick 
overview of, you know, what it is that we're going to chat about today and then we'll dive in. Yeah. So to dive right into it, it's, it's really around choosing myself. I choose me. Mm. Each one of us stepping in and owning, choosing ourselves, putting ourselves first, really deepening into self-love, into self-worth, into recognizing that we belong here. We deserve to be here. We are important. And that it's not selfish to choose yourself first and to put yourself first and to live from that place of knowing and owning just who you are and what you bring to the world and what you have to give and that you're allowed to receive and it's actually a great thing to receive Mm. and just all of everything that encompasses around choosing yourself Mm. and then also bringing light to how it's been glorified to not choose yourself and how the pervasive virus of lack of self-love and self-worth has permeated through society and all of the different challenges and complications that that has brought uh, internally within each individual and then also just in the collective. Right, yeah. It's it's such an important piece um, and and topic to to cover because, yeah, I think we can... As empathic, sensitive, loving beings, we can swing the other way very easily where we're sort of in this, oh, I have to serve everyone else. And it's all about, you know, it's 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 very spiritual, right, to Mm -hmm. to withhold from myself Mm -hmm. and to go without and sort of this lack of abundance mentality it it can turn into. And um, obviously that's, it's almost like the pendulum swinging too far the other way from the ego materialistic me, 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 Mm -hmm. you know, sort of Western uh, ideal that has permeated for many, many decades. Um, It's, it's, we got to be careful not to swing too far back the other way. Because what we're seeing is glorified martyrdom. Right, right. Right? It's almost, it's, yeah, it's glorified. It's, it's spiritual to serve and serve and serve and serve and give. And what we're seeing is that we're giving from a depleted, empty cup. Yeah. Right. Where we need to be giving from the overflow. Right. But that's something that's not as glorious or Mm -hmm. even like taking the time and the opportunity to really hold space for the self and to, to replenish and to refill and to allow that to happen. And so this is what we're seeing. And yeah. And the topic is so, is so interesting because you know, the the term selfish Mm -hmm. and, and especially in the spiritual world, it's like, Oh, well I can't be selfish. I'm only here in service Mm -hmm. and that's polarity. Mm -hmm. And so there has to be, you know, the cup pouring in, to one another and and to find that equilibrium and that balance yeah it, and it's a dance i mean it really yeah. is it's like the art of navigating 3d is finding this you know i often re- often refer and refer to refer to it as like, like the good kind of self when you're doing for others but you also know there are no others so it's coming mm. from a place of like oh i'm actually going to feel the energetic re- repercussions of it um and as you just stated though so many people are, are jumping to serving others and yet there's still a lot of work to do on themselves where, you know, they're, they're working out their own trauma and sort of releasing. I mean, if I had a nickel for every time I interacted with someone who had had powerful experiences clearing trauma from ancestral wounds, DNA, you know, in their own, it's like we carry this stuff forward from our own family lines, from our own past. Yeah. You know, a lot of people listening have had traumatic childhoods or yeah. things, you know, you you experienced a pretty turbulent, uh, you know, some pretty turbulent things. If you guys go back and listen, you go into uh, quite a bit of your personal journey. And, um, you know, it's like if had you sort of, uh, you know, early on in your own journey towards, you um, self-healing had you said okay now i got to heal every single person around me um and yet you're still like wounded right Mm -hmm. it's it's important for us to be able to really read that stuff right and understand the timing it's like yeah we you you may all of you out there many of you out there listening are probably i know meant to help many many people with but it's got to be coming from a place of like, okay, I've sort of, it's, it's, it's that idea of when the oxygen mask falls in the airplane, yeah. like what putting on your own first is yeah. what they teach you. And for a very good reason, because otherwise you're not going to do anyone any good at all. Yeah. And that, that, you know, the two sides of the polarity there is we're seeing the wounded healer, mm. the one that's so depleted, that's unhealthy, unhappy, and uh, expending all of their time and energy on, on healing others. And then 
and then there's the opposite end of the spectrum where people are stopping themselves from going out and doing their work because they're not fully perfectly healed yet. They're they're not like you know at their optimal a hundred percent, and so that they're holding back. And it can't be either or. There has to be balance. Knowing that the journey of healing and wholeness is infinite. Mm. We're never getting there. Right. We're never going to be completely one hundred percent done. At, at that point, you know, it's the end of your life, and. It can't be that you're just focused on the outside world because you said there's no separation. We right. are one, and it has to be in that perfect dance, that perfect equilibrium, that perfect balance. Yeah, and I think that is it. Really requires of us all to be checking in with ourselves all the time. Like, mm. where am I at? Like, for me, as I've done, you know, doing this show, obviously putting something out constantly to the world and an ever growing number of people receiving and then feeding back to me. So I have more people reaching out to me energetically than ever and I know that is only going to continue so then okay I, I, I've had to really learn to you know a lot of times it takes me and many of you know I, you know a while to get back I get back to everyone but I don't allow it to cause me anxiety like oh lots of stuff is coming in and lots mm-hmm. of heartfelt stuff is coming in and people pouring out their their love and you know questions and all these things I've I've it's been an interesting dance for me to learn how to, okay, I need to really read my own energy. Do How am I feeling in this moment? Am I in a place to respond now? Do I need to save this? Do I need to go mm-hmm. and just self-care and you know meditate? And maybe for me, sometimes like vegging out and watching some, some I mean, we're in the golden, golden age of television. Mm-hmm. There are so many good shows now. And you guys know how much I love stories. For me, oh, cool. Let me just go like tune into another story. It's like I've spent, I've had a 12 hour day of like intensity. Now I can just like, it's like reading a book without even straining my eyes ever, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that'll be one way for me to just like, to, to sort of recharge my battery. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. And then just knowing that when you start telling the story that there will be enough time for all the things Mm -hmm. and no matter how much comes at me, I'm, I'm a master of time and space and I'm learning to bend time and space. So yeah. I will find creative ways to deal with it all. And and there's no shortage of time to do so. Yeah. And I think that's, for me, something that I've had to cultivate and, and continue to develop. You know? I love that. What, what you're saying there is really about alchemy. Mm. It's the alchemy of your own energy. So energy mastery, really tuning in, being aware, being the observer, being like, ooh, okay, am I in a place of... Uh, abundance to give do I need to be replenished like you know really balancing out and knowing what you need and then time space that story is alchemizing time and space because it's it's all an illusion it's yep. something that we just we perceive with our minds but our minds perceive it based on the stories that we have and if we're in a scarcity mm. there's not enough time that I'm yep. never going to get this done there's too much I'm being asked I'm overwhelmed da, 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 da. you know you create this sinkhole this black hole of not enoughness. Yep. And when you can alchemize that and rewrite your story and the energetic in, in the way that you perceive, you do bend space time to be abundant. Yeah. Because it, it simply reflects what you feel and what you think. Right. Right. So, right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's um it's 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 an interesting world to start playing in, like, oh, hold on, all the rules about, you know, what I can or can't do or the limitations. Um, it, when you start realizing how malleable all of reality is, it's mm-hmm. like, oh, no matter how much comes at me, a hundred fold more than I have coming at me now could come at me and there will be creative ways to deal with it. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe through p- people that are assisting with certain things or whatever it may be. But there's, you know, be careful not to fall into that that scarcity mentality of, mm-hmm. of that frantic Inter- energy of like oh I've got anxiety because I have to you know get there and there's not enough time and you know a friend of mine recently had a, an experience in um, hypnosis where she had a full blown like interaction with her higher self like standing in front of her and that was a big part of the messages relax there mm. is plenty of time to mm. do it all you know and I think for a lot of us in this on this path it's like oh my gosh I gotta I've gotta save the world by you know, tomorrow at midnight or else, you know, all is lost. And it's like, there's, you, there's infinite time to do it all. Yeah. And you know, something, I mean, you're great at a lot of things. And I feel that the, the thing that you really master is 
understanding that you are the creator in your life like you are that center focal point of your simulation of this reality and you are so anchored in the knowingness that you're creative you're bending space time you are the one that's manifesting and that you can like your knowingness in your ability Mm -hmm. to do these things it i feel is what has catalyzed and enabled you to be so Mm -hmm. creative and and to have everything that you've built and i feel like and have the influence and the impact because you just know okay this is these are the gifts that i've been given and mm-hmm. i have and that's flowing through me and i'm going i'm allowing myself to utilize these mm. where so many every single one of us every single one of you listening all have potent powerful mm-hmm. infinite gifts and yet the kink in the hose is the 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 self doubt of Oh well, who am I? Or yep. maybe I, I don't. I'm not have, good enough. I'm I not can't good do enough. what I they did. I can't do it. I, There's not enough time. There, all of the not enoughness, all of that scarcity, really is what kinks that. And and what you've mastered is just letting go of all of the kinks and allowing it to flow through and um, trusting. What I've mastered, everyone, is I'm really good at making up shit. I'm really good at making up good stories yeah. about myself and trusting. That's it. And trusting it. That's yeah. like that's believing in them. That's like the whole formula. I just have like. For whatever reason, been uh, really like prone to making up really, really good stories about who I am, what I am, what I'm capable of, and that just has continued. That's 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 the formula. And you know, we talked about this. Um, you were you were part of a group recently, and you had an experience that was sort of in in relation to this that was um, pretty eye opening for you. Maybe you can yeah. share a little bit about that. Yeah, so without giving too much away, there was this uh, leadership training and this activity where we all have an opportunity uh, to go from space to Earth for a mission. And we each give a, a speech on why we, you know, want to go to Earth and what our purpose is there. And then we get to vote do, for who's going to go. And what was interesting is that may, more than 75% of the people didn't even choose themselves. Mm, wow. You know, they didn't choose themselves. And <clears throat> and and then after debriefing, you know, they upon reflecting, like, wow, why didn't I choose myself? Right. Why didn't I not <clears throat> think I was important enough or valuable enough or skilled enough? And, and deepening into that, like, ooh, who do I need to become and what needs to change so that I do choose myself? Mm. You know what's so interesting about that? When you first started telling me even more details of that story— um, <clears throat> And uh, you talked about yourself and someone, someone else, both, um, you know, being chosen. And then y- you analyze the difference. And um, one major difference is um, you had chosen yourself and the other person hadn't. Yeah. And instantly what went to my mind. And now keep in mind, this is someone who is who is. Like I just said, I've just made up. I've chosen myself. I've I've anointed myself as someone who is here to help to wake up the planet in in a significant way that is meaningful and empowering and powerful for me to have the experience and everyone that I interact with and and all those things. I just made all that up and you know abracadabra. I, you know, as I as I speak, I create. Uh, I create as I speak, and you know, like Henry Ford said, whether you think you can or think you can't you're right yeah and um so what's interesting even though i'm that person and i'm so much on that wavelength as soon as you told me that story my mind went to oh because that person didn't choose themselves and you you did they had some how made a a better decision yeah and then i'm and then you explained to me no actually it's good that i chose myself and like that was sort of viewed as a better yeah decision and i'm like oh yeah and i kind of shook out of the haze and i'm like oh you're right like duh like but this idea even in me of oh i'm supposed to sacrifice myself for the collective it's so ingrained Mm -hmm. in our psyche that Mm -hmm. you know even someone who's so apt to choose myself instantly judged it before you kind of explained further like oh they had made a better decision and and it's like wow so if i'm going there like then pretty much you know you you get an idea it's like almost anyone is is it just instantly showed me this like oh wow that's like totally like this cultural thing that i've been taught i'm supposed to sacrifice you know yeah and you know what stimulated me was it it, kind of from the original story of jesus sacrificing himself for Mm. all of humanity and how that was the you know the most beautiful and reputable and amazing sacrifice that he could give and mind you he came back and all of that but what this 
you know, this also stimulates within me is a psycho, uh, philosophical question that you can ask is if you have to choose whether you live or another person in front of you, mm-hmm. maybe a stranger or someone else lives, do you kill them and you live or mm-hmm. do you kill yourself and let them live? Right. Most people would probably say that they would kill themselves to mm-hmm. let the other person live. Because how could they live with the guilt and the shame of killing someone off? And it's more honorable. Well, especially if they're spiritual. Like, right? Yeah. If they're they're really good and they're, they're really spiritual. Oh, I'm, you know, I, I'm going to do the sacrificial yeah. thing. If I'm, you know, ego-based, you know, maybe not as much. But it almost goes to show you, you know, how, you know, sacri- once again, if I'm sacrificing myself... Like, really, now what good can I do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and what would it be like then if I chose myself? If I knew that I had to kill someone off to choose myself, and this was the only way reality would continue, that would call me to the biggest game. Okay, I like. what do I have to do in the world now? Yeah. What do I get to do? My life became 10x more valuable based on, on this potentially one interaction where I really had to say, like, Oh, do I choose myself? Yeah. And and why? Why is my life important? What do I get to do? Right. And this kind of reminds me of our episode that we talked about where I was, you know, chronically ill and I nearly died and I kind of met my higher self and had the opportunity to either die or, or to live. And I, I chose life mm. and that's where my chronic illness started to miraculously go away and I regained my power my life shifted and everything in, in my reality shifted with the choice of me choosing life mm. and then I had to ask well who do I need to become and what do I want to do and that pushed me into this leadership position and change changing the way that I interacted with life and I feel like that's something that most people don't have the gift of confronting this mm-hmm. direct choice of like, do I choose me? Mm-hmm. Right, right, and, right. And if you did, how does how do things really change for you? Right. You know, it, it kind of is coming up for me is I've heard it said. Um, I remember a long time ago, someone said some, something to me like we were talking about, you know, um, Christ consciousness and how for a long time, you know, I was raised very conservative Christian. And then I sort of had my own spiritual awakening and it was, and it was such dogmatic conservative, like, you know, in the box kind of, um, upbringing. And so I sort of rebelled against it once I was like, Oh my gosh, like actually that was, that was so wrong. Right. Or so off. And, and, and I kind of turned into like, you know, this rebellious, you know, early 20s, like, ah, screw Jesus. I hate Jesus. Like, you know, and and now, of course, it's mm-hmm. like, I understand that he was a messenger that was really teaching love, teaching mm-hmm. this, I and the Father are one. Same thing we talk about incessantly on the show. Yeah. He didn't ask to be worshipped or may have a religion, you know, his, his whole thing was hijacked, really, is the way I see it. But, yeah. you know, we we're talking about Christ consciousness and, you know, this idea that Jesus was a man and Christ consciousness is the energy that is even pervading our planet right now and how I feel now. I went from being raised to, you know, Jesus is the way to salvation to screw Jesus to actually Jesus was really cool. I really yeah. resonate with his energy and, you know, the things that he was teaching and and it was just hijacked. And we were talking about, um, you know, sort of doing this sort of work and, and the person brought up like, One thing you have to be careful of, and I never really thought about about this, is like when you're resonating with Christ consciousness and that sort of archetype, that Mm storyline, a a lot of times with that comes the martyr. Yeah. You know, Jesus was the martyr. Mm -hmm. And that's not necessary. So just be really aware if you're in that family lineage, if you will. Um, And, you know, I heard Osho talk about this a while, a a long time ago. I read a book um, where he talked about. Christ consciousness is a certain frequency of helping to, you know, wake wake up society, wake up mankind. Buddha consciousness is like a brother. It's a little different vibe. Zoroaster, you know, slightly different. And he started talking about these lesser known, you know, enlightened masters and how they had different, you know, one would just never even speak at all. And it was just his vibration would alter the room. Yeah. Jesus was really good orator you know really good with words it's like i really resonate with that character like using words obviously Mm -hmm. and and so it was really interesting when you think about oh these are just like different archetypes and different paths to sort of um awakening uh oneself and helping others to do the same um you know the the christ consciousness uh sort of 
frequency is one that you can get caught in the pitfall of martyrdom. Yeah. And it's funny because I look back now, it's like my gamer tag, and I ended up passing it on to my son. Um, and his, so his whole life, his gamer tag has been what, what used to be mine, which is, um, you guys know what a nerd I am for plays on words, is smarter, like martyr with an S in front of it. <laughs> so it's like this gamer tag to this day is smarter one. Uh, but Yeah, the, but what, what I feel we're, we're experiencing right now in this shift, this ascension, this golden age, to shift from 3D to 5D or whatever you want to call it is really the, the ending uh, or the merging of binary consciousness. So everything used to be it's either this or that, black or white, martyr or savior, uh, feminine, masculine, you, you know, and it's all opposite ends of the spectrum, all polarity. And what we're seeing is this merging where it's not either or, it's and yes you know and they're coming together and they're mm. not separate mm-hmm. and what does it look like to exist in this space where it's the illusion of separation the illusion of polarity is dissipating yeah right and what does that mean for each individual you know and that's when we we're talking about choosing ourselves and you're mentioning that you've you haven't really struggled with self-confidence you've always just kind of known your worth and been really empowered within that and for myself, it was a little different where half of me knew like, oh, I'm smart. I, I am a beautiful woman, you know, based on society's norms. I'm talented. I have a lot to offer. I, I have so much to give. And then yet there was a program running underneath that of, oh, but my dad didn't want to be in my life. And my mom was kind of abusive and my boyfriends left me. So I must be unlovable and right. unworthy right. and uh, maybe not good enough and or too much or not. And, and so it was really polarizing half of me thinking okay yeah i am worthy and lovable then the other half being like oh no but i'm not and then that duality Mm. and that inner conflict and this is something i recognize in my clients and my students and so many people i work with and it's like how can we integrate yeah and and transmute all of the not enoughness Mm -hmm. to appreciate it for the humbleness and the lessons it brought but then to realize that that no longer serves us if we want to really ascend into the i am good enough and i am the creator and I do deserve an amazing life. Yes. Yes. It's like honoring. It is time. It is time for mm-hmm. all of us that, you know, those that have struggled in a lot, probably most listeners resonate with that sort of, you know, back and forth between I, oh, wow, I am this. Hold on. No, I'm not. I'm not good enough. I'm not, you know, whatever. And I think that that duality most people I talk to have some level of, you know, struggle with that. And oftentimes it's it's a pretty decent sized struggle. Mm-hmm. It is time for each of you to be fully, fully aware. Like the story that, that it's like the angel and devil on your shoulder almost, right? Yeah. It, the cat's out of the bag. Like you are it, right? You mm-hmm. are source. You playing out this. You wanted to have the dichotomy of those contradictory sort of perspectives. You needed them to to give you the opportunity to fully choose self love mm-hmm. and self empowerment. And it's like there's just there's you know yes you can continue doing the the yin yang back and forth thing if you if you want and that there's no wrong choice but. You know, and it's time to in it's time to just like move into that full knowing and full mm-hmm. trust. And this is the thing that really serves serves me really well is having just like such a deep trust now. Mm. Like I, it's like whatever I'm pursuing or, or considering, or it's like oh, if it's for me, it will pan out. Like yeah. I'm worthy, and I could have ten things that I'm trying to do, and all of them fall flat on their face, and I'm not now. Oh, okay, so. That equates to not worthy. It's like, no, that equates to I, I learned something along the way. It's like, it's not over till you win. <laughs> yeah. And so there's two ways that you could take that. Say somebody tries 10 different things and they all fail. Well, you could easily make it, oh, I'm not good enough. I can't do anything right. N- nothing ever works out for me. You know, or you could see it as, oh, wow, I maybe have been so incessant on forcing things and trying and being anxious through it where the greater plan has me f- has been for me to let go and surrender and to once I do that for the thing that I'm actually meant to do to just fall into my lap miraculously with yep. ease and grace and harmony as soon as I just trust. Yep. And 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 so there's like two different, very different ways and energetics in which to surrender to life. Yeah. I, it makes me think of like my, my journey in business. It's like 
you know, I've been a serial entrepreneur my whole life, but every time I've ever worked, there have been multiple times throughout my lifetime where I worked for other people. And every time I worked for someone else, I got an incredible piece of the puzzle that I needed for my own thing later on. Mm. So it was like, you know, instead of, it's another great example, someone saying, oh, I'm working for someone else and, you know, their vision versus my own. And, um, you know, now I'm going to decide that that means somehow I'm inferior or not good enough and Mm -hmm. to do what they're doing or whatever. It's like, it's like, or, hmm, I'm here learning something, gaining great experience. I don't even know how or why uh, I'm going to need this particular tool, but I trust that I will. Mm -hmm. And I can look back and seriously, like, Every business that I ended up creating and, and even having great success from came from things that I learned along the way from someone else. Yeah. So if I had judged myself in those moments, you know, as someone who's like, you know, had always been an entrepreneur and now all of a sudden I'm working for someone else, I could have said, oh, wow, I guess I didn't make it. I guess I wasn't good enough. Oh, I failed. Now I just yeah. have to like sort of help someone else because I'm not worthy. It's like, yeah. uh, it's it's a just a great example of yeah. this. Like it's always teaching you something to only further empower you to step into more of your own power. And that's one of the things that I love to see is, you know, when you and I were talking about this last night, even with your coaching, you know, coaching business and having the the ripple of impact that you've had on so many, so many people, how once you start having a taste of that, and I know a lot of you out there are having a taste of that, like where you're starting to have the same type of effect that maybe the show has had had on a lot of people you're having an individual you know your own lives or a lot of people are starting their own blogs or podcasts or and it's so beautiful to see like because mm-hmm. we're all we're all capable of the same stuff yeah. right we may have different like avenues and paths that it's meant to express you know source wants to express through us in unique slightly different ways right but when you understand that there is uh, a certain genius that you have. There's a certain thing and path for you that is completely unique to you, and no one in the history of all eternity could have done it better. Mm-hmm. It's why it's for you. Mm-hmm. And when you really sink into knowing that, you know, instead of this, you know, as Albert Einstein talked about, if you uh, judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it'll think it's dumb its whole life. Yeah. When you understand there is like this thing that is for you, that is just for you and i mean that's a powerful thing to realize no soul in the history of mankind before now or after that could do it better than you which is why you got assigned to to that path and the thing that keeps you keeps you from it oftentimes is these like thoughts of unworthiness and yeah or the anxiety of like okay i have a purpose what is my purpose oh my god i don't know my purpose i need to know my purpose and and you we have to tune into the energy and so if that is scarcity, fear, worry, anxiety, yep. that's what will be reflected. Yep. And if it's just trusting and surrendering and believing and knowing and asking for guidance, being like, okay, all right, God, source, angels, guides, just show me. Put little, drop little breadcrumbs. Yep. Make it clear to me in words or symbols or sounds or opportunities. And then really, really just in your heart, just trusting that it will unfold, mm. which is scary, right? We don't want to trust. We want to control and manipulate and fear. And, and But if we can deepen and soften into that, even if you just try it for a couple weeks, mm-hmm. you will see and witness the magic that unfolds. Yeah, it's working smarter and not harder in a sense. Like um, instead of trying to force a square peg in a round hole, like following the threads, the energetic threads. Yeah. Where How is this flowing? How is it unfolding? Oh, does it seem like it wants to happen? Excellent. I'm going to continue to follow that trail. Oh, oh, wall, 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 wall. This is, I'm now feel like I'm forcing it. There's your, now you know. Mm. It's like, and if you trust that it's like, you know, think of yourself going down a stream with all kinds of boulders and obstacles in the way. And you're just, it, instead of you trying to navigate, you're just like letting the stream take you around and up. Oh, you might hit up against something, but then it redirects you a different way. It's like, it's so much easier. As someone who's done a lot of like trying to, physically move things and like make things happen it's like that's where you can really waste a lot of your energy instead of moving into this more you know surrender like flow i'm just all i'm doing is you know the way i look at it is everything to me is feedback Mm -hmm. i'm just getting feedback like oh oh i'm interested in this path is you know a career thing or i'm interested in this taking this trip or being a part of this workshop or this uh, 
this particular romantic interest. Whatever it is, it's like, okay, now how's the energy flowing? All I'm doing is like, oh, okay, well, that person just gave me this bit of feedback about who they are and where they are. Uh, let's say take a, a romantic relationship, for example. Someone, that, that's a great example because you'll be exploring with someone and then all of a sudden they you find out that it's like, oh, well, I feel strongly about this. And it's in stark contrast to maybe some somewhere that you're at. And if so, it's like, oh, cool. Uh, there's no judgment with that. That's feedback that tells me what I need to know yeah. about. And if you approach everything that way, it's just like always like, oh, this is feedback. It's just telling me what I need to know. Mm-hmm. And it just makes it so much more pleasant instead of I'm attached to this happening or that yeah. happening. And yeah, cause that's for suffering. Oh. oh, I've caused myself so much oh. suffering by being so attached, like wanting it to, so badly to be a specific way and holding on so tightly with like bloody yeah. grips, you know, <laughs> and then too. realizing like, Oh wow. Actually the thing that was meant to emerge is 10 times easier, more yep. harmonious. This or something Beautiful. better. <laughs> this is something better. And you know, one thing that I feel is important to too with being in the flow and and flowing with the energy and watching the unfolding it also i feel is important to still be grounded and anchored within yourself yep. and not just so caught up in everybody else's energies because you can spin out as well yeah and yeah. so that balance of being attuned and in flow and surrendered while also like knowing who you are and what's important to you mm-hmm mm-hmm uh, this is so such a powerful conversation, and uh, I definitely the time went really, really quickly, Sam. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, so one, um, you know, one of the things uh, maybe as we kind of wind down here, you can uh, tell tell people uh, once again, guys, if you want to go back and listen to the full Soul Share, you know, uh, that I originally had with uh, Samantha, it's episode eight fifty eight, and. Um, Maybe tell people, I know this for, for a lot of people, they didn't maybe catch that one. This is the first time hearing you. So what is the best way for people to connect with you? And maybe you can just tell them a little bit about, you know, what you, what you also do as far as coaching and stuff too. Yeah, sure. So you can connect with me on all social media platforms uh, with Samantha underscore Lotus. You can also find me on my website, SamanthaLotus.com. And what I'm doing a lot of different things mostly working by empowering leaders to really step into their greatness share their gifts with the world to create more of that ripple of impact so I do life coaching business coaching uh, metaphysical naturopathy ingrained in my coaching and then run workshops and retreats and just a whole bunch of fun different things Envision Festival coming up oh yeah 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 yeah. so um, you guys have probably heard me talk last year going to the Superhero Academy and Envision Festival and so Sam was a big part of putting that together and um, that's initially where we met and actually for those of you by the way who are um, interested in coming to the Mystic Manor uh, you know with the new show that looks like it's going to be beginning I should have a def- like more details very very soon um, but it's looking like it's going to be this summer where it actually starts kicking off and we start filming and then for those of you who actually come, uh, you know, 36 of you over the course of the year are going to have an opportunity to come and live in the Mystic Manor for a week, retreat style experience and actually be on the, the, the you know, um, for those of you who have never heard me talk about it yet, Optimistic um, is going to be spelled M-Y-S-T-I-C, uh, like late night style talk show, all consciousness related, live music, you know, all video uh, out of this incredibly epic spaceship mansion manor. I don't know what it is. It's going to be a hub of consciousness that has landed in Venice, California. So uh, it will be happening out of that house where I'll be living. And uh, so any of you who are interested in coming and being a part of that and staying for a week and having like, we're going to have all kinds of curated experiences for you, including coming out and being on the show so when i have like my soul share guest just like i do on the podcast they'll be sitting there and then at some point you'll come out and you get to like interact and talk with us both any questions or um you know anything that we can help to optimize in your life um and so part of sam and i getting together here is uh we're exploring the potential of her being uh you know the person that helps to curate your experience too so if you're loving sam as much as i do and you've been thinking about coming to the house uh, there's a very very high likelihood that you would be um doing some of the even some of the stuff that you just talked about that you mm-hmm. offer will be integrating into those experiences uh for you guys who come so uh 
as of now, I'm still just uh, gathering names of people who are interested in coming. Uh, so you can email me, brandon at positivehead.com, and just let me know I'm interested in coming to the Mystic Manor and being a part of that. And as like more details emerge, pricing, all that stuff, I'll be sending it out to everyone who emails me and um, letting you know. So. So yeah, um, mm-hmm. so that's exciting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shared vortex space. Yeah, it yeah. is. It is going mm-hmm. to be. My vision of it is like fifty years from now, people are going to look back and be like, "Oh my gosh!" You know, there's these these legendary stories at the Mystic Manor of like, you know, who was there on a on a given? Because we're going to have, aside from shooting the show there, just like events constantly yeah. and yeah. and it's right. You know, it's ten minutes from the LAX airport, so mm-hmm. just having like the all the consciousness change makers in the world coming through and, and you know yeah a it, vortex of infinite potential mm-hmm. it's really what the energetic blueprint of this this project feels like yes and yeah. anyone who comes through is like my 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 uh karma back guarantee is mm-hmm. that uh, that you will have an experience that is transformative that is yeah. um you know the energetics of what you'll be sort of taking on being there for a week it's like you know, you're going to take that back, it back into your daily life and, and it's just going to ripple out into just more magic and more expanded consciousness and just the house, the the events, the people that you interact with are going to then be a part of you and vice mm-hmm. versa. And that's what I love. I love the idea of like having you guys all connect and like mm-hmm. get the to magic, be- the potions, the wizardry, uh, yes, all of it. Yes, oh. yes, yes. Yeah, come hang out. Come hang out. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, well, um, this has been absolutely lovely. You know, we were talking and we had a little bit of a synchronicity this morning because as we were, were talking about before we started recording here, um, this idea of choosing ourselves, right? Like, mm-hmm. would you choose yourself to be the one to come and, you know, save Spaceship Earth? Be crazy enough to make up the stories like I've been. And you are that worthy and telling that story. And then we got talking about my, what music we would play at the end. And I was like, oh, you know, uh, Sam, why don't you choose? And uh, I started showing her sort of the list of artists that I have music licensing for. And someone had just sent you Dea Dova. Yeah, one of my clients. Yeah. And uh, the song Return of the Bird Tribes. And I'm like, well, that's perfect because that song is all about, all based off Ken Carey's book, Return of the Bird Tribes, which is channeled material. One of my favorite all times books. Um, actually, I think even... Um, Erica, when she ran the show when I was out of town, read from it a few times. But um, it's all the story of Native Americans a thousand or so years ago and, and how they all came together and created, like, band the tribes together after there'd been lots of, like, discord. And then it was sort of, like, prophesied that at this time, those energies that helped to create community would come back and that's the return of the bird tribes now. Mm. Like, you know, and so we are the bird tribes. And I actually wrote, made a song like 2010 myself called Bird Tribes based off of it. I had synchronicity at the time around it when I wrote it. And then I saw Dea Dova a few years ago and it was the first time seeing her. And I had this intuition like, oh, the next song is going to be important. I'm going to take out my phone and and video it and it was her releasing this song Return of the Bird Tribes for the first time playing it at an event and so I actually recorded it and then today it's like when you you, you know you brought up oh someone just sent me Dea Dova and this, this song like you're yeah. just being exposed to it and I'm like that is the topic that you just said you want to talk about is us choosing ourselves to come back to earth and you know we are the ones we've been waiting for and we are mm-hmm. worthy to to sprout our wings and yeah and, and I'm going to be seeing her in two weeks in Costa Costa Rica. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. It just... and, and if anyone is in, interested, by the way, in Costa Rica, sort of last minute and going down to an Envision Festival, is there still potential yeah, for that? we still have a few tickets. Uh, I know that you have a code for all of your listeners. Oh, yeah, I do, don't I? Yeah, you do. And so Envision Festival, amazing art, music, yoga, <clears throat> dance, transformational, community, uh, eco-sustainable festival you know, right in the jungle on the ocean of Costa Rica is just so such a epic. beautiful event. So epic. Yeah. So we can link, we can link a little link. In yeah. The yeah. Yeah. What, um, where do people go? I think we had a code set up for positive head. Didn't yes, we? we do. Okay. Yeah. So if you use the code positive head and then where do you remember, do you know exactly where they would go to utilize it? Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the link is super. It's on superhero Academy. Okay. Or they can just contact you too. Or, yeah. Right. Yeah, definitely. Okay, excellent. All right, everyone. Well, that concludes today's episode. We hope you enjoy this 
incredible track by Deodova, Return of the Bird Tribes. Sam, thank you so much for coming mm-hmm. on and sharing and connecting again. This has been lovely. Thank you so much. It is such an honor, and I'm really excited for just what's to come next. Yes. A lot of magic. Until next time. Until the next magical interlude journey well, everyone. Love you all so, so much. Love, love, love. <laughs> Also, before we queue up today's song, I wanted to let you all know that we have finally created the Game with the Universe on our website, where you can choose the first number that comes to your mind, and it'll pull up that episode number of the podcast. I've been saying this is a great way to co-create synchronicity and magic with your higher self for quite some time by doing this manually. But now, if you go to positivehead.com, forward slash Y-O universe. There is a super fun and simple interface to play this game with your higher self. I firmly believe just by setting the intention to play in this way, it opens up the door for magic and it's a synchronistic way to hone in on nuggets of wisdom out of the huge catalog of episodes that are specifically appropriate for you at this time in your journey to becoming the next greatest and grandest version of yourself. And it also makes for a super fun way to engage and invite friends, family, people on social media to check out the podcast as well. So be sure to check out positivehead.com forward slash Y-O-U-N-I-V-E-R-S-E and be sure to tell all your friends so they can play a game with the universe, which also helps the show to reach new people, which I greatly appreciate. And as a quick reminder, be sure to also check out positivehead.com forward slash transformation if you're curious to learn more about Purium Superfoods and why I take them every day. On this journey of becoming the next greatest and grandest version of ourselves that we have all embarked upon, I can't stress the importance of managing your physical vibration enough. And quite honestly, Purium has put together the simplest plan I've found to do so, and I'm sincerely excited to share it with all of you. Lastly, if you're craving more consciousness elevating content, be sure to check out Gaia, which is my personal go-to source for streaming consciousness content on the web, where you can stream an incredible 7,000 plus exclusive videos covering 5,000 years of wisdom. As you all hear me constantly say, it's a daily conscious effort to maintain an elevated vibration. And if you're looking to journey deep down the rabbit hole to do so, then Gaia is the best place I know of to do it, period. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. Check it out.